What might the world look like without mobile phones, the internet, satellites? Welcome to the world before digital communications, and it looks a whole lot like the 1950s. Take a moment to consider just how different our world is today compared to then. The digital communications revolution has changed things, and it may never have happened without Solomon Gollum. Born in 1932 in Baltimore, Maryland, Gollum was the type of kid who might make today's local headlines. He possessed a superhuman ability to memorize numbers. I memorized the first thousand decimal places of pi. At just 19 years old, he was off to graduate school on a full scholarship to study high-level abstract math at Harvard. My professors at Harvard took great pride in claiming that all the stuff they taught had no possible application. And using obscure mathematical number patterns called shift register sequences, deemed impractical by the brightest academic minds at Harvard, Gollum would usher in the age of digital communications. This is a shift register sequence. They can be difficult to understand for non-mathematicians, but you can think of them as sequences of ones and zeros that can look random, but they're actually determined by complicated mathematical functions. Because they use binary code, the language of digital communications, shift register sequences can be implemented in communications technology to help us communicate in ways we previously thought impossible. What kinds of ways? Gollum would design secure communications for weapons guidance systems, lay the foundation for mobile phone communication, and while working for NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory at Caltech, he once saved the entire space program from a catastrophic failure that we were in the process of preparing a space probe to go to the vicinity of Venus. And for that purpose, it would be useful to know where Venus actually was. Gollum's plan was to ping Venus with a radar signal. The returning signal would give scientists the planet's precise location within the solar system. But the team had to overcome a serious challenge. You see, when we send a signal through space over great distances, the signal picks up noise and weakens. By the time a signal returns to Earth from a trip to Venus, it has disintegrated beyond detectable levels. But Galam found a unique way to give it a boost. Galam designed a shift register sequence that would repeatedly reverse the phase of radio waves in a unique way. The returning signal would then match up with the pseudo-random sequence of phase changes, but the noise from space would not. Galam had devised a way to find the signal buried in the noise picked up from long-distance transmissions through space. Gollum had paved the way for interplanetary communication, but there was another major consequence. Gollum's findings uncovered a fundamental flaw in our understanding of the solar system. What astronomers thought to be the distance between Earth and the Sun was off by a lot. Space agencies call the distance between the Earth and Sun an astronomical unit or AU. They use this important number to calculate trajectories of planetary space probes. The calculations rely exclusively on this number being correct. We discovered that the official value of the astronomical unit was off by one part in a thousand, which is a huge error. Uh, it would have meant that our space probe would have missed Venus by several hundred thousand miles. Concepts similar to Gollum's Venus solution allow all of us to communicate privately on our mobile phones without picking up the millions of other conversations taking place in the airwaves. Gollum's work with secure communications has also earned him the affection of the NSA. I actually got the medal of the director of the National Security Agency and it said something like, for contributions to a program of national significance. But they never told me what that was. <laughs> Oddly enough, despite his scientific legacy, Gollum is perhaps most famous for a contribution to popular culture. In 1953, Gollum, a fan of puzzles, wrote a book about a shape-based puzzle he created called Polyominoes. In his book, Gollum describes a checkerboard and a collection of domino-like puzzle pieces. One day in the mid-1980s, Gollum received a message from a young Russian computer scientist. Gollum's chapter on puzzle pieces called Tetrominoes had inspired him to write a new program. That's right, Solomon Gollum, savior of space travel. 
patriarch of mobile communications, is also the godfather of Tetris. Well, I'm proud that I've lived to see the uh, adoption of so many of the things that I've worked on being so widely adopted that no one even thinks about where they came from. <laughs>